The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You're welcome to this session of distance learning. I'm Stella Ndumbu, your manual level teacher. We are moving to lesson seven. Before we get to our lesson, we correct the last homework. The homework was find out two cereals and tubers with high starch content in Cameroon. If you did that, you must have realized cereals like maize and rice have very high starch content. You have tubers like cassava and cocoyam, which have very high starch content. We continue with model two of our program, which is agriculture. We are on lesson seven, which is processing cereals into starch. Our lesson will be, look, will be treated following this plan. We'll look at our lesson objective. We we'll have the prerequisites. We we'll have a problem situation. We will have learning activities, and then we'll have a summary of our lesson, and then some application exercises, and finally, homework. Lesson objective. By the end of this lesson, you are expected to understand the reasons for processing agricultural products. State disadvantages of food processing. Identify and use equipment and tools for food processing and process cereals into starch. Let's move to the prerequisite. At this level, you are already you're, you're able to identify and use some processing tools. You can also identify some instruments for measuring cereals, tubers, and roots. And you can also cite some examples of cereals, tubers, and roots. Let's move to the real life situation. Listen attentively while I read. Your aunt's large maize farm gave her a, a bountiful harvest, but her dresses are fast wearing out because she does not have enough money to buy starch to buy starch often neither does she know how to process starch okay we continue by looking at the reasons for processing agricultural products why do we process agricultural products we process agricultural products to improve on the taste to make food more nutritious. We also process agricultural products to make food more attractive. When you move the, when we process the product into other byproducts, you discover they are more attractive. Unlike when you just remove from the farm. We also process agricultural products to create packaged food for sale to remove harmful organisms such as bacteria. We also process food for 
preservative as a preserving agent. So processing is a method of preserving food. We also process to remove toxins and reduce the risk of food poisoning. For cultural and religious reasons, we process agricultural product. We also process to extract important substances from the food, to increase commercial value of the food, to facilitate transportation to distant places. Okay, let us look at the, uh, the disadvantages of processing food crops. It is good to process food crops, but it also has some disadvantages. Some of which include, do in the course of processing food, some nutrients may be lost during, some nutrients may be lost, like vitamin C. So when you process food, agricultural product, you might lose vitamin C. Also, there are food addictives, which may be harmful to some people. In the course of processing, there are some food, there are some uh, uh, things that are added, there are some ingredients that are added to, uh, in the course of processing, which might be harmful to some people. We also have food processing is time consuming. Yes, it takes a lot of time in when you have to process the agricultural product to another byproduct. It is also expensive. Unlike just removing the crop from the, uh, the removing the food from the farm, harvesting the food and consuming it like that, for you to process it, it becomes expensive because you need other things to add to it. Okay, let's look at categories of food processing. Food processing is in three main categories. You have the primary food processing, which is changing raw, raw agricultural products into food or ingredients that can be consumed. For example, when you change, um, when you change cereal into starch, it can be consumed by using, uh, it, it acts as a spice to thicken soup or to to, to starch your dress. We also have the, the second category is the secondary food processing. That is using ingredients produced through primary food processing to make ready to eat food. When you take flour and you bake cake, cake is ready to eat, but you cannot consume the flour in it directly. So you bake cake, it becomes ready to eat. That is a secondary um, food processing. Then you have tertiary food processing, which is large scale manufacturing of ready to eat food. Large scale manufacturing of ready to eat food. When you take cassava and you process gari, gari is ready to eat. You can consume it like that. When you take your potatoes and you fry, you can consume, or you make flakes, the potato flakes, or um, uh, it's ready to eat. So it is the tertiary category. Okay, let's continue by looking at tools and equipment used in processing. That's food processing. We have graters, which are used for grating. You can see the different types. There are many types. It could be bigger than this, or it could even be smaller than this, and they are easy to get. We also have um, a grinding mill. You have a grinding mill. This is mostly used for commercial purpose, where you go and pay and you grind. It's very important in food processing. You have Hand, a hand machine, manual, you can grind on uh, using this machine manually. You also have something like blenders and with, uh, molinex, which uses electricity. You can use it at home. So all of these are used for grinding. 
Okay, you have pillars. Here you have pillars, you have knives. So when you are dealing with tubers, you will always need these pillars. A knives which are used to peel, to peel off the unwanted bag or the, or the, the skin of the tubers. Okay, we also have blending forks. These are the blending forks. They used to mix your paste. You also have spatulas. So all of these are used to blend the paste and water. When you have to add water to the paste, you use the spatula or the blending forks to blend it to have a, 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 a uniform, to have, to have a uniform texture. You also have a containers. You have container. You have a container like this. It could be bigger than this. It could be smaller than this, depending on what you are doing. It's used for mixing. So you put your paste in it and you mix. Then you have a cutter, which is used for cutting, especially with tubers. You have a sieve. This is a sieve. There are varieties of sieve. But this is the local one that we can easily get. It's used for sieving or separating solid from liquid and large particles from small particles. That is the use of a sieve. Okay, we continue with our lesson looking at caring or how to care for food processing tools and equipment. How do you care for those tools that we have just seen or the equipment we have just seen? After using, you have to take care of it. How do we care for it? One, you have cleaning. So each time you use, whether it's a greater machine, you need to clean. You have sterilizing or disinfecting. You need to disinfect your tools because you are dealing with food. You have proper storage. So you store your equipment or tools in, in the proper way so that dead or um, uh, rust does not get to eat. You have maintenance or replacement. When you discover any tool that is getting bad, you need to, if, you, if it is at a level that you can maintain, you maintain it, you repair it. But if it is at a level that cannot be used, you need to replace it. Okay, you have tool lifespan. You always check the lifespan of your tool. When it's expired, you should know that it's expired and needs to be replaced. Let's move to processing of cereals into starch. And here we will will look at processing maize. Our case study will be maize, processing maize into starch. Maize is one of the cereals. So that is what we are going to be using. We'll look at the different stages. Stage one, equipment and materials. So you need to assemble your equipment and materials, put them at the spot where you want to um, carry out your processing. Then you have to prepare yourself by putting on safety wares, it could be footwear, your clothes, apron, headscarf, and so on. Second stage, you'd have to prepare the material for the transformation. Our material here is maize. So we have to prepare maize for the processing of starch. So the first thing we do with our maize after we get our maize, we need to clean the maize. So to clean the maize, you take off the husk. You get your maize, you take off the husk, as you can see here. And then B, you look at, the B is shilling the maize. Shilling the maize, so you, you shear off the maize, as you can see on the picture. Remove the grains from the cup using a mirror or your hand or you can use a knife you remove the grains you can see how it is being done here with the hand you can equally use a knife as well as you can use a mirror so when you remove the husk 
you the, the grains from the husk, you have your maize like this. These are the maize grains. The third or seed is soaking of maize. Before you soak your maize, you have to blow the maize to get to, to get rid of dead. And then you wash the maize before soaking it in water. And you soak for about 12 hours. You can see how the soaking is being done. It has been washed and then you soak in water for about 12 hours. D, you have to grind, or D is grinding the maize. Before you grind the maize, you have to wash the maize several times with cold water. And then after which you mill or you grind or you blend the maize. As you can see, you can use the hand machine to grind. You can use you can use you can use a mixer to grind, or you can go to the commercial machine where you can pay and then you grind your maize. E washing and sieving of paste. Remember, we are still on preparing the material, we are still preparing the maize for the stash. So we are on E, which is washing and sieving of paste. So you mix, after grinding, you mix the paste with enough water. When you mix with enough water, use a sieve to separate the chaffs. So you can see how the chaff is being, a sieve is being used to separate the chaffs. You can use this kind of sieve, you can use this one or this one. These are all local seeds. That is easy. You see the stages. It's being separated. You see, these are the chaffs. So you leave, after which you leave the next um, stage three. We are now on stage three, which is extraction of starch. For you to extract the starch, you, you leave the... the, the, the the, the paste to settle. And when it's settled, you pour out the water, leaving the paste. After which you use a cheesecloth to press out water from the paste. This is a cheesecloth. This is a cheesecloth. You pour the, 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 the you pour the paste in the cheesecloth and then you squeeze. When you squeeze, you have white water like this. You have white water like this and then you leave this water you leave the white water to settle for one hour after which when it's well settled you pour out the water to get the starch so when you pour out this water now this is the last stage you pour out this water you get the starch what will be remaining will be the starch so you collect the starch when you collect the starch we move to stage four, which is you collect the starch. Then you spread the starch on a roof sheet or tray. Then dry the starch under the sun. When you dry, you'll get lumps like this. After which you have to blend or mill the starch into powder. When you blend or you mill, you get fine powder, very soft. And at this level, the starch is ready. This is the starch. Stage four is packaging and preservation. So before you package, you need to weigh the starch. You can either bottle it or you parcel it. You can then you label it at least on the on the package it should be written there stash okay let's move to preservation of stash stash is usually preserved by storing in airtight containers like metal metal containers plastic containers plastic bags or ziploc bags you can also store in the refrigerator let's have a summary on how we, what we have seen on how to preserve stash you can see on the video, the corn is washed, 
After washing the corn, you soak. When the corn is soft, as you can see, you drain out the water, you put fresh water, you wash and you drain it out to remove the smell. You drain it out to remove the smell. You use your mixer, pour the corn in the mixer, and then you blend. When you grind, you sieve. You use a sieve, as you can see on the video. You use the sieve. After sieving, you separate the chaffs and so on. You sieve very well. When you sieve, you see the chaffs and you see the white water. You put it in the water. You put it in a bowl for it to drain. And then you tie your cheesecloth. That is a cheesecloth being tied. You tie it to a bowl and then you, you put the, the, you bring the, the white water, you sieve again. After sieving, you have to remove almost all the chaffs. You sieve very well, and then you get fine. You get. You can see how the chaffs are being squeezed out. You wrap the cheesecloth to squeeze it out very well, and then you have that white water. Cover and preserve very well. The chaffs can be dried and used for other purposes. Then the white water, as you can see, the white water, you keep it for an hour to settle. When it's well settled, you see the water that comes up is white. You pour out that water from it, it's transparent. You pour out the transparent water you, and the starch will remain. You collect the starch, you spread it on a tray and you, you dry. After drying, you can see it being put in a, in a, in, in a bowl. When you put in a bowl, you have to, when you put in a bowl, allow it, when it's well dried, you put it in a bowl. After which you get it like that. Look at the video, it's been dried. And then you remove, the next thing is to be blended. You put it in a mixer and then you blend. When you blend it in a mixer, you get fine white powder, as you can see. That's it being blend when it, you see the powder that is coming out. You see that it's very soft and white. Fine. This is starch. You put it now in a plastic container. It could be a metal container or a plastic container like this one. And then you cork it tight. It should be airtight. And that is how you preserve your stash. Okay, after which we move to uses of stash. Stash can be used to cook. It's used in cooking. It is used in baking. It's also used during weaving in the textile industry as on cloths. It is also used to increase the strength of paper during manufacturing. So, starch is used in the paper manufacturing industry. The starch is also used for laundry. In summary, we have looked at the reasons for processing agricultural produce. We have looked at the importance and disadvantages of processing agricultural produce. Produce. We have also looked at the different categories of processing. We have looked at equipment and tools for processing, and we have seen the stages of processing maize into starch. So let's look at some application exercises. Exercise one. What is the problem raised in the statement above? What is the problem raised in the statement above? The answer is the wearing out of your aunt's dresses and her ignorance of the process of making starch. Those are the main problems raised above. Exercise two. How can you help her solve this problem? You can help her solve this problem by teaching her how to process starch from maize because she already has maize. So that would be of great help to her. Exercise three, name two uses in processing cereals. 
two tools used in processing cereals. Name two tools used in processing cereals, tubers, and roots. We have a grinding mill, you have a knife, you have many of them. Exercise four. Outline the stages involved in processing maize into starch. The first stage is to assemble the equipment and materials. The second is to prepare the maize for transformation. The third is to extract the starch, extraction of starch. And the fourth is packaging and storage. That's the last stage, packaging and storage of starch. Exercise five, state two uses of starch. Starch is used for cooking and for laundry, and you know all the other uses. Homework, using the same procedure, make your own starch from maize. Using the same procedure, make your own starch from maize. So I'm expecting this homework in before we get to our next lesson. So for further research, you can consult these references. We have come to the end of our lesson, and our next lesson will be the transformation of potatoes into flour. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen 